This episode of HD Nation is brought to you by FreshBooks Online Invoicing. Time to get our HD Nation on. William writes in, I'm as much of a geek as both of you, but I find myself wholeheartedly agreeing with John Herman's article on Gizmodo titled, I Just Want a Dumb TV. He's basically saying that the little computer that lives in smart TVs moves at a different pace than LCD and LED tech, and that smart TVs are becoming as disposable as smartphones. Herman also believes that rather than spending extra money on smart TVs, your money would be better spent on speakers or Apple TV-like set-top boxes, which are better designed than the smart TVs by Samsung or LG. What are your feelings about this? Thanks, Bill. Heresy! Uh, I kind of understand. I understand that you don't want too much technology built in. Remember right. when they used to put DVRs inside of TVs and the DVR how, would break? How long did that last? Not like very long. Five minutes. But or the DVD monitors. I mean, here's the thing. Look, if if technology outpaces the computer inside your television, you can still hook it up to a home theater PC. You can still hook it up to a Blu-ray player. You can still hook it up to a home theater P or a, a, a set-top box. I say don't spend extra for technology you're not going to use. Right. Always. I mean, why do that? But I wouldn't necessarily shy away from a TV that has that functionality built in. You can ignore that altogether mm -hmm. and never plug it into the internet, never connect it, never never worry about it, and right. still have a great experience. Because it, it, whether you like it or not, 3D technology and you know internet enabled, basically internet internet add-ons in 3D are checkbox features for all the major monitor manufacturers. Everybody out there, Sony, Samsung, LG, Vizio, they all to remain competitive in the big wall of televisions at the big box store. If they don't have their internet enabled Netflix and they don't have 3D on almost all of their offerings. They're not going to be competitive when the super buying frenzy begins this fall. So basically you're not really paying extra for it because you aren't going to be able to buy a monitor without it unless you, yeah. know, you shop at super high end monitors or, or somebody actually does a couple models without and, it. And one difference between what I'm seeing nowadays mm -hmm. from the app environments on televisions compared to even a couple years ago is the, the selectivity and the, the ability for you to pick what you want to put on the TV. It's not just a preset set of functions anymore and that's, that's really nice. Right. Say, say you wanted Voodoo but you didn't want Netflix. You can do that nowadays, provided the TV supports it. And considering all of us with smartphones are all, you know, that functionality is being mirrored on the TV side so much now, and it's not, there shows no sign of slowing down. So it's kind of nice to have the app developers thinking about developing for that platform in addition to the stuff we're holding in our hand. Yeah, it, you know, I look, it would be great, Bill, if you could buy this stuff, you know, buy a television without this stuff, but the reality, it's a checkbox feature, there's, which is a classic way of saying you're going to get it whether you want it or not. So I'm not thinking about for, it too for the much. Uber high end. I would say that's true. If you can look yeah. at like the mid range products, though, there's usually one SKU somewhere that right. has like, okay, I'm going to ignore the all the crazy internet stuff. It might have a network jack, mm -hmm. which is kind of convenient sometimes. For but upgrading the firmware in your HDTV. Totally. <laughs> for, if for nothing else. Yeah, we'll find out. It'll but be I, interesting to see where TVs are at the end of this year. Netgear was at CES. We didn't get to cover them too much while we were at the show. If you haven't heard about it, they have a really interesting universal Wi-Fi range extender coming out. They say it's going to double your wireless range, works with any wireless router, plugs directly into any wall outlet, basically go halfway between your router and where you want it to reach, plug that thing in, and you're done. I can't wait to see how well it works, especially since those it has products Ethernet before. in. Nice. But, but have you used one that works? It wasn't bad. We, we did just that. We set it to the, right. the halfway point of where the signal started to go wonky and we needed to get it out past the garage mm -hmm. and sure enough it just it just picks up that signal that's flowing up to that point and kind of like rebroadcasts it out <laughs> over the same using the same network information. So I will be curious. Problem is, is like there's like this in your like apartment a building, there's device. like 32 freaking Wi-Fi routers within 10 feet of your apartment, so that could get ugly. I don't know. Big announcements from Netgear all around networking your HDTVs, your Blu-ray players, your set-top boxes. Yeah, Netgear's got a new set-top box in Neo TV 550. They want you to feed it video from the ReadyNAS Ultra 2 home Ooh. media server, which has TLNA ready. Duh. Has Orb streaming to your mobile devices built in, eh. and it expands your TiVo capacity. Something nice for Robert. The big deal they had there though was. 3D HD wireless home theater networking kit. Netgear says they basically rewrote how they created this, just built this router from the ground up for jitter three, for jitter, I should say jitter free. Jitter free. Jitter free 3D HD over 802.11n, four devices max, 
No change to your existing wireless setup because it'll, it's designed to handle multiple HD streams, basically from your server to multiple HD devices. It's a dedicated router for HD video and it, it's what Neck here says, if you want to do multiple HD streams simultaneously, you need this router. So I will be curious, you know, I don't know if you need had, this router, but I, I would be curious to see the performance. Four, I had three HD streams going to my house right. the other day, one, all off of a NAS device, and now I want to see how many more I could add. Wirelessly or hardwired? Two, at least two were wireless, and then two were hardwired. So yeah, they're claiming mix. 1080p, 3D, HD, over 802.11, and no hiccups. That would be great. But you basically need a second router on your wireless network just yeah. for that. If, if it has to be wireless, it sounds like somebody's got a solution, though. But didn't you get to talk to the CTO at DTS and at CES about the surround sound codecs? I asked the CTO. I mean, we, had this, we brought this up the other week, and I was like, oh, finally, we get to go to CES and confront, not confront, <laughs> talk to the, the Dolby and the DTS folks. I didn't get a chance to talk to Dolby because they were way off in another they were way off in another casino I couldn't get to but uh -huh. here's what the DTS CTO the, the chief technology officer had to say when I said what makes your codec different from Dolby Dolby versus DTS, we have had a lot of questions from you guys about which one to choose. The reality is, we don't get to choose. The studio chooses Dolby or DTS, but we want to learn more about DTS and how it differs from Dolby. Fred Kitson, CTO DTS, you're the man in charge of basically the encoding, right? Pretty much, yes, I am. So what's the difference between Dolby and DTS? That's like a 30 second answer, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, the main thing really is one thing we tried to do is have one format that would go from a, a low bit rate all the way up to lossless. And that, it, that makes it a lot easier for the content producers. They produce one stream and that's all they need. So essentially when they encode something, it's, a, it's the same front end, they're just choosing the amount of bandwidth that's employed? Right, so you, from that one encoding, they have the ability to produce a low bit rate that you might use, for example, as satellite transmission. You could use an intermediate rate for you know, efficiency of storage, or you can go all the way to studio lossless. So that ease of creating content is one of the compelling features. So how about I got my audio file ears on, I've got the perfect seat, I've got the room tuned, I'm listening, if I can actually find a Blu-ray that has both a lossless Dolby and a lossless DTS soundtrack on it. What am I listening for sonically that differs between the two? Well, one of the things, you know, we, we certainly give the option to the content producer, people producing uh, the Hurt Lockers and the Avatars, and uh, fortunately, uh, it's over 75% have chosen to produce that content and primarily in DTS. So you would have to go to the secondary channel and you could do that and switch over and listen to a comparison with Dolby if you want to. So is there anything out there that particularly sonically makes the DTS or Dolby or anything differentially? Or are you basically just trying to exactly reproduce what's coming out of the board when they mix it down? Well, it really was the basis of DTS, was to create a soundtrack when uh, actually Jurassic Park came out to get that same kind of visual experience that was commensurate and with an audio experience that's, you know, essentially what you would, would have uh, witnessed or observed if you had been in the studio. So it's really re recreating what the content producers produced, what was mixed originally, and as faithfully as one can do that, and that's why we say, we, that's why we call it lossless. So that was our intent from day one, and we still preserve that. Do you have a particular Blu-ray that you think the audio is outstanding on for demonstrating your home theater? We have, uh, we have quotes of people that, uh, again, some of the, the really high-valued content, like, like the Hurt Locker, for example, where people have listened to whether it's explosions, whether they look at uh, the contrast of uh, high frequency, and, and that's probably a good one to evaluate. Fred, you're the CTO. That means you're technical. It means you're probably a geek. It means you walk into somebody's house, you see the surround sound, and there's something you want, I bet there's something you want to fix over and over again when you look in somebody's room and the way they got the speakers set up. Yeah, oftentimes you see people doing some random, uh, um, essentially installation of speakers all over to either look cosmetic or look interesting. But you, know, you have to remember, you're, you're trying to get a good experience on the sofa. <laughs> so the experience has to be tuned to where your ears are. Right. So you really want to think that that, um, that acoustic envelope you're creating is somewhat centered in a plane about where you're going to be sitting. And, and hopefully pointing the speakers at where you're sitting. Uh, I've seen speakers uh, point at the wrong direction, you know, in other rooms, uh, all kinds of crazy things. And um, actually, that's one of the technologies uh, moving forward we're trying to address is automatically setting up and calibrating and optimizing that experience. So even if you do put some random deployment of speakers, it does the best you can do. I think it sounds like Odyssey may have a little challenger coming up in the near future. Fred, thank you so much for your time. Hey, now it's time for the new Blu-ray releases for the week of January 18th, 2011. First up, Animal Kingdom. 
This brutal Australian crime drama released last year is the feature debut of writer-director David Michaud and won the World Cinema Grand Jury Prize at Sundance, multiple Australian awards, and has been nominated for a Golden Globe as well. It follows 17-year-old Jay, who turns to his more criminally inclined relatives after his mom dies. Needless to say, it gets intense as Jay gets deeper into the life that he had previously been sheltered from. Some compare it to Goodfellas, some call it a less glamorized godfather, but the consensus seems to be that this is definitely the must-see mafia movie of last year. Extras include an hour-long making of and a 33-minute Q&A with the writer-director and two lead actors. Next up, Cold Dog Soup. This 1990 film follows a young man who manages to get a date with the girl of his dreams, except then her dog dies. She asks him to bury the dog, but before he gets very far, a psychotic taxi driver played by Randy Quaid turns the seemingly simple task into a night-long adventure. If it sounds ridiculous, that's because it is. But if you don't take it too seriously, this black comedy can be quite fun. No real restoration went into this transfer according to Blu-ray.com, but it's still a decent copy. The only extra on the disc is a montage of trailers for other films, so not much to see there. But if you want to see Randy Quaid run around the city carrying a dead dog in a garbage bag, look no further than Cold Dog Soup. Also released this week, Takers. As the name suggests, this 2010 film is about a bunch of guys who take stuff. More specifically, it's a heist movie starring Idris Elba, Matt Dillon, Chris Brown, Hayden Christensen, Paul Walker, and more. While most professional critics slam this movie as cliche and superficial, the general movie-going public was a bit more favorable. Extras on the disc include a 10-minute making-of featurette and a second making-of featurette that focuses on the stunts. So while it's not the most intellectual or original film out there, if you're a fan of fun action flicks, Takers is worth a look. Other releases include The Army of Crime, Buried, Checking Out, Death Race 2, Down Terrace, Fire on the Amazon, Jack Goes Boating, Justified, the complete first season, Lebanon, the Criterion Collection's The Naked Kiss, the Criterion Collection's Shock Corridor, and Stone. Hey, it's time to thank one of our sponsors, FreshBook Online Invoicing. FreshBooks is an easy to use online invoicing service that saves you time, gets you paid faster, and makes you look professional. Extra promise, you might actually enjoy invoicing. And getting started is completely free. Just go to freshbooks.com and sign up for a free account. And here's the really cool thing that they're doing for Techzilla viewers. They're actually going to give away a birthday cake every day to somebody that signs up from our show. All you need to do for a chance to win a birthday cake is be sure to enter Techzilla in the How Did You Hear About Us section when you sign up. And no, it doesn't have to be your birthday to win, but who doesn't love birthday cake?